professional pilot, aviation exams are extremely difficult. You're not just memorizing huge amounts of information, you're also dealing with deep technical complexity for each individual part of that information. Most students take over a year to pass all of them, so it's a long grind. And if you combine this with having only six sittings to pass all 13 exams, and with the results of those exams potentially having a huge impact on your career, the pressure is intense. The good news is there is a best way to study, a proven strategy backed by science that you can follow step by step to give yourself the best possible chance of passing all of your exams first time. In this video, I'm going to take you through this five part strategy from start to finish, including all the tools, techniques, and everything else you need to give your career the strongest start possible. I'm an aviation student myself, and this is also the exact same process that I'm using. Now, let's get started with step one, do the groundwork. Before you even start studying, you need to understand what you're actually studying for. What are the subjects? What topics can come up? How long are the exams? And how many questions are there, etc. Now, I'm not just going to give you the answers because they change all the time. Instead, I'm going to show you how to find them yourself using the official sources. That way, you'll always know 100% that you have the most accurate and up-to-date information possible, even as things change. For EASA students, you'll want the easy access rules for aircrew, regulation 2011. For UK CAA students, you'll need the aircrew regulation UK, which is also 2011 regulation. I've linked both in the description below. Both of these documents are almost 2000 pages long, so I'm gonna make it easy and point you directly to the important parts to focus on for now. So first for both, you'll want to find the contents page, which for the EASA is page 12, and for the UK CAA is page three. Okay, so now we're on the contents page, you wanna look for Annex 6, subpart FCL, section three. So that's quite far down. Uh, annex 6, part FCL, which is here, and section three, which is here. And then you wanna click that, and then I'm just gonna show you how to do it on the UK CAA as well. So Annex 6, which is quite far down. Annex 6, subpart FCL, L section three, so click there. And you can see for both, we're on the theoretical knowledge examinations section, which is exactly what you want. Now, this is a secret section that most students looking at this document miss because it's technically for ATOs. But this section covers the exam process, how the exams are conducted, what equipment you can bring, and most importantly, the question breakdown per subject and topic, which is here and here. Basically, these tables show you how many questions are asked in an exam per topic, and it does so using these codes on the left. But how do we know what topic each of these codes is referring to? Well, to answer that first, you need to duplicate your tab. So we'll do it for both. Go to the contents pages for both. And this time you want to go to Annex 1, subpart D. Subpart D. Annex 1, subpart D. Click on those and you can see now for both, it's taken us to the commercial pilot license, CPL. In this section, you'll find more useful information, which is this time designed for students. It contains information such as learning objectives, but importantly, it's also where you'll find the actual syllabus content. So if you scroll down, past the airships section and to here, and you'll see what I mean. So on here, it's the same. Scroll down past the airship section and here we have air law on both sides. These tables are your exam specifications that show you exactly what content could have questions asked about it in the exam. Basically, if it's not in here, then there won't be any questions about it. If it is in here, then there could be questions about it and so you definitely need to learn it. And if you look at the left side here, you'll see the same reference codes as before. And so by cross-referencing the two, these codes with these codes, we can find out exactly what topics will be tested in each exam and exactly how many questions are gonna come up per topic. For example, by looking at the question distribution graph in Air Law, we can see that there's gonna be two questions for 010, zero one. And if we go to here 
and we go to 0, 1, 0, 1, which is here, we can see that that's international law. So we can see that there's going to be two questions on international law. But then, for example, if we come down to 0, 1, 0, 0, 6, there's going to be 10 questions. So we can come here and we can find 0, 1, 0, 6, which is here. And we can see that that is aircraft operations. And it's the exact same for the CAA. So if we come here, two questions on 0, 1, which is going to be international law. And then again, if we come down here to 0, 6, 10 questions, scroll down and find 0, 6, 0, 5, 0, 6, aircraft operations. So we can see that both are very similar. So if we want to study efficiently, then we know that we should be spending about five times more time and effort studying aircraft operations than international law. And we can see exactly what we should be studying for both. So going through this is extremely useful and it does it for all of your exams. So, you know, aircraft general knowledge, instrumentation, flight performance and planning, same for both documents. And so using these two tables and cross-referencing them will set the framework for your entire study journey going ahead and will help you set the exact correct plan from the beginning. I'm going to put up two summary tables on screen showing all of the key exam information as of June 2025. So take a screenshot if you want, but just remember to always verify using the official sources as I've just showed you. There's also plenty more relevant information in these documents that I haven't covered yet, but you definitely do need to know. So make sure to read through all the relevant parts of the document in full, as well as go through the main EASA and UK CAA exam websites which are these, and I've also linked those down below. But for now, I have one last crucial tip for you before we move on to the main part of the video. If you're doing the EASA exams, then go to the website that I've just showed you, scroll all the way down to the download section and download the most recent ECQB update. This will tell you the most recent changes made to the exams that depending on how recent the changes were made, might not be included in your training material yet. Unfortunately, there's no UK equivalent to this document, so you guys will need to be cross-referencing your training material to the most recent exam specification as you go. Now, let's move on to step two, which is learn the material. Okay, so I know that was a lot, but I hope that's given you the best possible foundation for all of your upcoming studies. Now we can finally get to the actual study strategy itself and the science behind why it works so well. We're going to start by learning and understanding the material using a top-down learning approach. You might recognize this concept from the Human Performance and Limitations exam. All it means is that we're going to start each topic by getting a broad overview first and only afterwards going back through and gradually work our way into the more complex details. This is particularly useful to do when being faced with either a large amount of information or very complex information which for these exams, we have both. By doing this, the easy level of simplicity above forms the context for the difficult level of complexity below, making it a lot easier to understand and prevents burnout by trying to tackle two difficult concepts too soon. What I like to do is use the BGS video library, which is perfect for this. First, I'll watch a video about the topic I'm learning in full from start to finish as a really low effort way to get a broad understanding of everything and how it all connects. I won't understand everything at first, but that's fine because the bits that I do pick out will give me that crucial foundational layer of understanding with very little effort, but will make the next step much, much easier. Only then do I move on to the actual study material in my lecture slides and work through them slowly in much more detail and being much more thorough. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll also be doing the next step at the same time, which is Step three, make revision notes. You need to be making revision notes as you study. In an ideal world, we'd be able to understand all of the material first and then go back and make our revision notes after. But due to the sheer amount of information you have to learn, it just isn't practical. You only get 18 months from the date of your first exam to pass all the rest. Otherwise, you have to start all over again. So as you're studying, you need to be condensing all of that information down into revision notes. The key here is to do this manually using your own words. So don't copy and paste and don't use AI. Instead, 
Imagine you're writing your notes for the purpose of teaching that material to someone else. Because this forces you to synthesize and have a deep understanding of the material rather than just regurgitating information word for word. This process of writing your own notes as if you were going to teach someone else is called the Feynman technique, named after the famous physicist Richard Feynman. Many of you might have heard of this technique because it's such a popular and proven strategy, with this study showing that students who use this technique scored better than 70% of other students who didn't use it. So this is definitely a tip you don't want to ignore. A tool that I highly recommend using to make these notes is a software called Anki. It's the most used study software in the world that you've probably never heard of, but I'll explain more about that later on. Because first, we're going to move on to the next step, which is step four, memorize the information. Now comes the part where most people go wrong, including myself in the past and probably you. Most people think that reading your notes over and over is the best way to revise because you're repeatedly putting the information into your brain, therefore strengthening your memory. This thinking makes sense, but it's extremely wrong and has actually been proven to be one of the worst memorization techniques. Science shows us that memory is actually created not when we put information into our brain, but when we take that information out of our brain. In other words, when we recall that information and use it. And this actually makes much more sense if you think about it, because this way the brain only remembers information that it uses and forgets all of the useless stuff. The scientific name for this concept is called active recall, and it's been proven to be the single most effective memorization technique that we have, with this study showing it can boost memory retention by up to 50% compared to reading and rereading alone. To actually implement this technique into our study strategy, we can use flashcards. So take a piece of paper, write a question on the front and the answer on the back. When revising, read the question and try to answer it without looking and then confirm the correct answer using the back and repeat. I'll show you a much better way to actually do this in just a moment, but every time you do it, you are actively strengthening the neural pathway for that piece of information and recalling it becomes easier. If you keep consistently doing this over time, you will be shocked by just how much information your brain can really hold. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. Learn how active recall works and use it. Like I said, it's the single most effective revision technique you could possibly do. But we're not done yet. You can boost the effectiveness of this technique even further by using spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is the scientific name for simply changing the amount of time between when you repeat a flashcard. Basically, every time you get the answer wrong, shorten the amount of time before you do that flashcard again. If you get the answer right, lengthen the amount of time before you do that flashcard again. This study shows that practicing active recall with long intervals between each test produced a massive 200% improvement in long-term memory retention. So pretty soon, you'll find that you can leave a flashcard for months without forgetting it, saving you from wasting time by repeating flashcards you don't need to do anymore, and also making sure you can actually remember the information for your entire aviation career, rather than just forgetting it straight after the exam. And these two proven study techniques are exactly why I use Anki. Anki combines active recall and space repetition into one piece of software. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you my Anki software. And so you write your revision notes as flashcards in the software. So here's my PPL license exam revision flashcards that I made. So here's my air law exam. If I show you this, I've written it as per the specification. So if I click on this one, Annex 2, Rules of the Air, and I click Add, and I can add a card here. Or if I go to Browse, then I can see all of the cards that I've made here. And you can see each of these has a, has a question here and an answer here. And then when you go to actually study, then you click Study Now. It will show you the question. You say the answer out loud to yourself. You click show answer, and then you can rate down here how well you did. So if you did really bad, then it will show you that flashcard again in 10 minutes. If you did, you know, not too bad, then five days. If you did good, it will show you in 11.9 months. And if you did really well, then it will show you again in two and a half years. And so by answering these questions, you're practicing active recall. And then when you give your rating down here, 
the Anki algorithm automatically applies spaced repetition. It's also applying a lot of other scientific study concepts like interleaving, which aren't important to know what they do or how Anki does it, but the overall effect this software has is to improve the quality and efficiency of your studying way beyond what you could ever do manually. It's completely free, open source, and is used by lots and lots of people. So if it interests you, seriously, check it out. But for now, let's move on to our final step, which is step five, practice questions. You've learned and memorized the content now it's time to apply it. So do as many practice questions and mock exams as you possibly can, and then do even more. The goal is to consistently score 90% plus on mock exams to give yourself some buffer room for when odd questions show up in the real thing, which will happen. Doing practice questions is similar to active recall in that you're retrieving information from your head and using it, but if you do still need some scientific evidence to convince you to do practice tests, then this study shows that doing practice tests can increase your results by up to 15 to 30%. There are many question banks available to be able to do this, and the common strategy in the aviation industry is to use multiple different ones so that you're exposed to the widest amount of questions possible. In the best question banks, such as the one provided by Bristol Ground School, you'll often find that the same questions that you practice with are the exact same word for word as the questions in the real exam. So the more you do, the better prepared you'll be. And there we go. That's the full guide on how to prepare for your professional pilot exams from start to finish. Step one, do the groundwork to understand the exam process and form a revision plan using the most up-to-date official documents as I showed you. Step two, learn the material using a top-down approach to prevent you from burning out. Step three, Make revision notes as you go using your own words to force a deep level of understanding. Step four, use science-backed tips like active recall and space repetition to remember everything. And step five, finally, slam as many practice questions as possible with everything you've got until you take the exam. Bristol Ground School is the leading EASA and UKCAA school for online self-study students trying to become professional pilots. They have all the tools, materials, and support you need to excel at every stage of the process. So if you're interested, check out this two minute video next to see the full range of services they have on offer to give yourself the best chance of starting the career of your dreams. Good luck.